difficulty okay. you're having answering some of these questions about endpoint were probably uh, in the mind of Justice O'Connor when she wrote the opinion in Grutter for the majority and, as Justice Barrett said, indicated that um, these racial classifications are uh, potentially dangerous and, and must have a logical endpoint. And instead of leaving it vague, the opinion didn't say uh, until you reach a point where you're satisfied that diversity has been achieved or something vague like that. It said 25 years uh, in there. And so I want to hear how you address that part of the Grutter precedent, because as I understand your answer, you would extend it far beyond 25 years indefinitely, and that would be an extension, I think, or you can tell me how you read the 25-year language. But I think the reason it's there, and I think it's real important because there are four paragraphs leading up to that, is because the difficulty you're having answering the question of when, without that time limit, when it would otherwise be achieved. So, of course, we don't read the 25-year as some sort of strict expiration, and I don't think on its face it was structured as such. Uh, even Chief Justice Rehnquist in his dissent said this is not a, a fixed deadline. Well, Justice, but, Thom uh, Justice Thomas, in his separate opinion, referred to it as a holding. Justice Kennedy referred to it as a pronouncement. So, anyway, just to make sure the full picture is presented there. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, uh, Justice Kavanaugh, I think that... Uh, Every institution in every state will differ. I mean, we have states coming to the court and saying, we have reached our diversity, uh, uh, educational benefits of diversity goals. We don't need to engage in any race conscious admissions process uh, at our uh, state flagships. And, uh, every, and we are, are at the point uh, where I think the expert evidence here pretty definitively shows uh, that we are able to meet what we feel uh, is uh, an inclusive, diverse environment through minimal consideration of race. And, and I think that uh, we will get there based on this qualitative process, but there is no strict numerical benchmark. One of the I things the other side has emphasized is that in the period since Grutter, in the uh, two decades since Grutter, that we have more experience with states that don't allow race-based admissions, California, Florida, Washington, Michigan, and others, and that those examples now show <laughs> with greater confidence than might have had in 2003 that some of the questions we were asking before, some of the race neutral alternatives, can not have the risk of treating people differently on the basis of race on the file, but at the same time produce significant numbers of uh, minority students on camp campuses. So in some ways the experience uh, they say is relevant. I'd be interested in your response of how to think about that. Yes, I think that the experience of the University of Michigan system and University of California system helpfully illustrates the point I'm trying to make, which is uh, they say uh, that in their experience, it's really a campus by campus analysis. And uh, in particular, the most selective public universities are continuing to have major struggles uh, particularly enrolling a sufficient uh, number of African-American students for them to reach their educational goals. And, uh, and I, I would direct the court to page 26 to 28 of the University of California's brief because what they say they're experiencing is that there is actually an inverse relationship between uh, a, uh, in, uh, African-American students and their, their, their sense of belonging and their sense of uh, tokenism and isolation uh, with how selective the university is. And so I think that's why uh, you're, you're seeing this wide spectrum of progress uh, towards the day that we all are looking for where we do no, do no longer have to consider uh, race. Can I, can I ask a question following up on Justice Thomas, too, about what diversity means? Does the University of North Carolina consider one's religion? We consider it as, as part of our holistic process, yes. Uh, and so Can it's, you explain how that works? Yes, and, and this is helpful because it's the exact same thing that we do for all of our other uh, diversity goals is if in context and an assessment of an individual application, uh, applicant, uh, their religious background or their religious experiences uh, suggest that they might contribute something to our campus community, uh, then that can be considered a positive attribute that is considered in our holistic process. You have and, them check a box, though, as to what religion they are? We do not have them check a box. So but, how, but, how do you know, then, what religion the majority of applicants are? So our analysis on uh, our religious tolerance climate is... Uh, 
uh, not pegged to the admissions process, but we do have an entire process set up and a whole range of programs to try to uh, ensure a, a, an open and tolerant religious environment. And uh, so we do do engage in the same kinds of surveys and qualitative analysis of our campus community. And we're, find that we're finding that on the whole, uh, we feel we're meeting our goals and we still have some struggles, particularly with Jewish and Muslim students feeling like they belong on campus. 